stop? Yeah, I just did it so that it went. I I made a mistake. I I made it to go to my computer, but I really needed it to go to the cloud. So now I've set it up to go to the cloud. Mm. So. Okay, we're good. Um, here comes Cecile. Well, welcome mm -hmm. everybody. We're so delighted to have uh, Olivier Payon with us, who is um, joining us for the second time because we talked to him uh, a couple of years ago or a year and a half or so ago uh, when we watched uh, Tokyo Shaking. And so mm -hmm. we're delighted to see him again for um, to talk about um, um, Lie With Me, uh, Arrête Avec Tes Monsanges, which was a, a, a novel and then turned into a film uh, recently. So here's Cécile. So welcome, At Cécile. Please. Hello, Cécile. So you were just starting to talk, Olivier. Me. About, Giving me um, any choice. <laughs> <laughs> you were just starting to bonjour. talk about... <laughs> bonjour, bonjour. Sorry, you were just starting to talk about the adaptation of the book into a, into a film. And I wondered how you first came across the book. Obviously, it was a bestseller. Um, was it one that you looked at and said, I'd like to do this? Or was did it come to you in a different way? No, it was a producer, you know, who um, a film producer who just read the book and he called me and he told me, "Ah, oh, I think it could be a, it could be a good thing for you to do it." In fact, at that time, the um, the book was not uh, yet a success, you know, because okay. I, I think it's the same in US, but in France, pub pub publisher try to sell the right for books before the release of a book you know what i mean yeah so i was one of, uh, one of the first to read it and in fact I, I um i was really moved by the end of the book you know most of the i, I don't know if people here uh, read the book before but uh, uh the book is really is really different because there is a uh, the biggest part of the book is about the teenage love story Mm -hmm. And in fact, the encounter between the writer and the son is more like a pretext to to talk about the past, you know, about memories. And me, uh, uh, when I read the um, the book, uh, the encounter between the writer and the son, I thought it was really original. You know, it was the first mm -hmm. time I, I read this the this kind of story, and. Um, and that's why I wanted to do the movie. And when I met uh, Philippe Besson for the first time, I didn't know him before. And I told him, you, you, you wrote a book about the past and I want to make a movie more about the present, you know. And he liked uh, the idea. And, and during the meantime, between the moment I read and between the moment uh, we signed the contracts, <laughs> the, the novel was suddenly... Uh, a blockbuster, a huge success in France, but because I was the first and because he, he liked, Philippe Besson liked my idea, uh, okay, we we go on together, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was lucky. Yeah, and um, as uh, that's a sort of a big change is that you are looking very much at the present in, in your film and the book looks very, very much to the, to the past so um when you came to think about um who you would who you would cast to 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 play those roles of like the young boys but then the the older man um and as uh, uh, stefan um how did how did you go about that how did you because obviously you had to thought to think that there's got to be some kind of like family likeness and that kind of thing yeah uh, in fact you know now because this is my sixth uh film and uh the cast in the end for, for, for my family are always different from my ideas at the beginning, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it was, I had so many different actors, for example, for the main part. It was really difficult for so many reasons. And Guillaume de Tonquedec is really famous in France, but more the, who plays uh, the writer. Uh, Guillaume is really famous in France, but more for TV series or comedy you know it was uh, he is he, not used to do this kind of of movie and in fact uh, uh, yeah, at start it was supposed to be another actor and and two weeks before the shooting finally the, this famous actor um, started to be afraid for 
different reasons, especially about the part and about the gay part and about mm-hmm. the, his image in the audience. So he decided to quit. And finally, uh, Guillaume de Tonquedec, uh, he, he just arrived two weeks before the shooting. So it was oh. really a surprise. But uh, for Victor Belmondo, who plays Lucas, uh, he was the only one I, I met, you know, because I was looking for, he was not famous at that time. In France, uh, is is the grandson of Jean-Paul Belmondo, who, who was a huge star, but uh, Victor was playing small parts for 10 years, you know, he was just trying to, he was working really hard, but uh, it was really difficult for him, perhaps because of his name, you know, we mm-hmm. don't like this kind of, Thing in France, but uh, I had the chance to to meet him two years ago, and I knew, you know, I was I was looking for a young actor quite modern. You know what I mean? Were really shiny, like in the first part of the of the story of the movie, but I needed also an actor who was able to express his. Uh, uh, um, a darkness and profoundness and something really deep and and really interesting and and Victor Belmondo I knew he was really kind really sunny really funny but I didn't know if he was a, he was good in playing you know what I mean I, if he if he was deep enough and we make some test uh, how do you say that screening screening cast mm-hmm. yeah and he was so amazing so so he was the only one I. Uh, I, I met for the part and I was really happy for him because thanks to this movie now in France, he, okay, it's okay for him. And for the two young actors, two young actors, uh, it was it was more difficult because of the sex scenes, you know what I mean? Uh, I needed some, my, my producer told, asked me, uh, how are you going to do it? Uh, because, you know, it was my first love story mm-hmm. uh, my other movie was not about love and it was also my first sex scenes and these sex scenes are really important because 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 in the book they are really more you know harsh than, than in my movie but it's really important because this is a story of how love can uh, how do you say that sorry I'm tired uh, how love can grow up thanks to sex and uh, and tenderness and you know the first scene is quite difficult but then step by step they, they start to know each other and it's about that so it's really important there is a purpose and the two actors they were so jeremy and julia they were so mature you know they read the book before so they knew the, the scenes were really important and we we worked a lot to uh, a lot together we talked a lot and uh, and it was funny because uh it was the first the first sex scenes scene was the first scene for them to shoot. You know, they chose to start with that. You know, I asked him because they are different. Uh, and 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 they decided to 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 start with this scene and and it was funny because they could perhaps they could feel that I was not so, you know, I was really I took care a lot about them, you know, we, uh, with a very small crew, and and perhaps I care too much, you know. And they say, "Don't worry, Olivier, we're gonna do that." And and they were so in the scene when we were shooting, you know. And I was really impressed. But when I said church, you know, they they came to see the monitor, the TV monitor, to to see how it how how the scene was and yours they, they were really technical so I was really lucky to have them but I showed them sorry I, I, my answer is long but uh, I showed them I chose them because in fact they were really great alone you know when you're making a casting you start with one uh, actor that up the other and then after you you have two actors you like and you put them together to see the the the, the chemistry you know what happened. And in fact, um, I met other young actors that, that they were great. But when we put Julian and Jeremy together, it was so obvious, you, you know, there was a real chemistry between between them. And they say that uh, I was lucky because between the moment I showed them and the shooting, they, they, were, they were four months, you know. So they knew each other, they became friends. 
and they were in the same theater school and so so that's how i showed them and and when you were doing that part of the story um did you do it kind of in chronological order or um did you keep um no uh, um, no because you know uh, uh we don't have the choice you know we, we in fact the budget was not so big so we had to organize everything now in fact i decided see i decided to shoot uh the the scene from the past uh at the end of the summer because i, I needed you know this sunny atmosphere this melancholic mm -hmm. but sunny atmosphere so in fact you're right we 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 don't shoot we we started with the to shoot with the past and then in november and december we we shot uh, the present part and the funny thing is that guillaume de tonquedec the main actor the writer the uh, the actor asked me oh can i see the the scenes with the young people the young actors and he told me because this is my memories yeah, I need I need to know my memories, and he was right. And and Guillaume say in the said in the interview that when he watched these scenes, he was really impressed by young, the young one, you know, and 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 he told himself, oh, I have to be on the level because he was really impressed by them. So yes, we started with the past scenes. Okay, uh, Cecile, you put your hand up. Would you like to say something? Yeah, I just I just wanted to go back to um because you said that Guillaume de Tonquedec just arrived two weeks before, but the but the young actor who plays him, I mean, they look so <laughs> they look so alike. So did you just change the way you you I mean you dress the young actor so he would look like like no, the no, no, no. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> It was a so long story. I try to be short. I'm going to try to be short. In fact, we had the, uh, because it was a really long process of production with this movie, because I was supposed to do it before the COVID, then everything was stopped with the COVID, then uh, I changed, the production changed, you know, because uh, I had a bad relation with the first producer, but finally uh, I found a good one. What I mean in actors were always, always changing because of all the, all of this you know uh because time okay and uh as i said i had a very famous actor in france and okay i was not so you know i wanted to do my movie so i, I but i was not so sure about him for the part but uh, but okay i accepted i say okay and i chose uh the young actors and jeremy the blonde one was so different from the 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 great actor I had, you know, there was no, and my producer was really umber, uh, embarrassed about that, you know, and they say, but it's not possible. But me, in fact, I was sure about Jeremy. I was sure, and I told them, listen, I don't, I, I don't care if they don't, you know, in. I prefer good actors than good actors that you know who se ressemble, who are, uh, who look the same. And I say, I just know that I'm sure about Jeremy. And and so it was a fight with my producer because they told me, no, uh, they they have to look uh, like the same. And finally, this great actor that that I like, in fact, is really famous and nice. But he, uh, okay, he 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 finally he left. And my producer had the good idea. They knew that I wanted Jeremy, the young one, for the part. I was sure, and 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 I'm oh, and I'm really happy for him now because 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 the scene for him is really is important. And so my producer was really intelligent because they they they, they watch Jeremy and finally they find they were looking for an actor and the only one who had a. You know, who seems like Jeremy was Guillaume de Tonquedec. Mm -hmm. And Guillaume de Tonquedec, he I liked him and he really want he really wanted to do this kind of part. And the, the lucky thing is is quite similar to Philippe Besson. Right. So, yeah. You know, finally it was an happy end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I watched an interview with uh, Philippe Besson just before I started watching the film. 
and I was watching it with my wife, and she said, "Is that the same person between Guillaume de Tong and uh, <laughs> Philippe Besson?" That, she was saying it, maybe he's just a little bit older or something. It was really funny. yeah, no, because in fact, uh, once I knew uh, Guillaume de Tong uh, was going to play the part. I decided to play on the ressemblance. I don't know how to say that in English, ressemblance. And uh, and and so I I put the same clothes. We we cut his hair the same, you know. And the first time Philippe Besson saw the picture of uh, Guillaume de Tonquedec pictures, he was so shocked, you know. He yeah. he told me, but but it's me, you know. And uh, even the pain, uh, the pencils, the pain uh, Philippe Besson used. Uh, for to sign for autographs, uh, the the pain is the same, you know. I, I ask him, so we play with that. Yeah. But in fact, I, I didn't ask, uh, I didn't ask Guillaume de Tonquete to act like uh, Philippe Besson. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. to find uh, his own meaning and interior of the character. Right. Could you talk a little bit about where the film takes place and what your relationship is with that area, the the Charente and ah you... yeah ah because it's full of Americans in the movie. Um, it's in Cognac, so as mm -hmm. you know, and 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 the, the city of Cognac with the famous brand of brandy of uh, no Cognac. It's not a brandy. They don't like when we say that, but it's, it's kind of alcohol. And in fact. The novel takes place not far away from Cognac, at uh, 30 kilometers from Cognac in another city. But the encounter between the writer and the son in the book is in Bordeaux, in a in book. bookstore or mm -hmm. in a library, I don't remember, in a bookstore, and also in Paris in a cafe. So, you know, it's not really cinematographic. You know, I needed a context. I needed a place. I needed with people I didn't want to 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 shoot just two two guys talking around the table. And in the book at one moment there is just one sentence who say that the Stefan's uh, parents were making uh, grapes for the cognac uh, were cultivator I would say and in fact two years two years before I started to work on the script. Uh, I made a sh very short documentary uh, in Cognac uh, for NEC, you know, LVMH, NEC. Mm -hmm. And so when I read this sentence, and I remember the 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 the, the, the town of Cognac that I knew, and also all the context in the film. With the Americans, with uh, with with the the boss, with the. In fact, this is what I lived when I was making my documentaries. You know what I mean. There is not all of that in the book. So yeah. in the book, the the son, Lucas, is really in the book. Is uh, is working uh, in in California, but for uh, red wine. You know Napa mm -hmm. Valley wine, or I don't remember. So I decided to to change and to to put it in the cognac because it was connected with with the purpose of the book, and I put um, I put all my souvenir about all these Americans, uh, because in fact NAC and cognac is more famous in America and all over the world than in France, you know, mm -hmm. that the case, and I was really surprised by that. So that's how I decided to to put the the action in cognac. And and you filmed in the Hennessy yeah. building, is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because and we were really lucky because uh, because uh, Hennessy loved the really short movie I did for them. It was uh, it was in fact it was a really short documentary about the boss of Hennessy that we see. Well, he's an actor in the movie, but uh, you know the the old man was the uh, the, the boss we we see in the movie is really inspired by the man I I was shooting for Hennessy, and in the lives this 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 man was not so sympathetic. We say was not so you know he was really old school mm -hmm. but my and but in my short documentary suddenly it was really everybody loved him you know because i mm -hmm. made him sympathetic so it was really about that that when we called them a few years later to shoot they were they agreed and we were lucky because we could uh shoot in the family mansion 
you know the white and and this is a this is uh this is not an hostel because this is private but this is for the big uh, american rapper you know mm -hmm. rapper or beyonce went there to to sleep or you know it's really it's like a jovel hidden jovel for them and we were really lucky because we could uh, shoot there mm -hmm. that's beautiful and and so you made up the the name bosoni was just a completely made up name uh, yeah and because we by on the side of the yeah, it's, yeah and it was funny because it was the name of my first uh assistant director and we just put a me greg like nsc and yeah because we, nsc didn't want to to us uh, to use their name and it was better like this so you had um some real real i mean people who were not actors in the Abs film then. Yeah. absolutely in fact all Alors, in the because I like you know I'm I'm making documentaries and and I love when I arrive in a city or in a country. Okay, there is my my story, but I I love to to mix people from the real city. For example, I made a movie in, a few years ago in South America, and I I decided in Uruguay, and I learned uh, Spanish for that because I wanted. It was in a little town, and I wanted the town to be in my in my movie, so I needed to speak with them. And then uh, I asked to the workers of NSC's worker to play their own part for you know, mm -hmm. little parts, you know, that mm -hmm. uh, the guy who opened the door. The... So they are all from NSC, for example. But the most uh, obvious example is with the grandmother. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I think, I don't know if if you felt that because in France it's obvious for, for us because the sound of her voice and the way she speaks is really different from suddenly the, the, the for French people, for French audience, suddenly it's like a documentary. Right. And I don't know if you, because it's in French, you, you mm -hmm. felt the same. But, uh, and people, when I was in the screenings, people uh, asked me about this. The, that scene and in fact yes it's really bizarre because uh, uh, she's not actress at all of course the grandmother and was looking for I was looking I was near cognac and I was looking for a real actress to 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 play to play this part and uh, I didn't uh, I didn't find her and finally I was uh, visiting the, the the farm for the movie so mm -hmm. the farm who is in the movie you know and you have to know that i was looking for a little farm but now there is so much money so uh yeah there is so much money we, we can say that in the farm with the cognac mm -hmm. that all the farms are big you know what i mean and i couldn't find it was really difficult to find a, a little farm because in the 80s uh people who were making grapes for the for the cognac were really poor in fact mm -hmm. cognac was not a la mode in the 80s like because the, the story takes place in 1984 so it was so finally i found the farm and the owner you know she was retiring and uh, her husband were were dead for a long time and and she was really talkative, you know. She was really nice, and and she was talking about the chorus she's making every 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 week. And she was like this, and she told me that she was a farmer for her whole life. But uh, when she was young, she was playing in the theater club of her village, but uh, she was not good at at all, and so she decided to to to, to stop. And at the end, we talked. Uh, about cinema, you know, she did. She didn't know uh, the film was. Uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> she didn't know uh, what. Avec qui était le film? What the the film was? You know, she right. didn't she, know about the actors in the. Right. Film. She didn't know that Luca was going to be played by. Victor by Belmondo. Belmondo. Exactly, and it's important because we were talking cinema, and Jean Paul Belmondo were just. Uh, just died uh, a month ago and she started to talk about Jean-Paul Belmondo and that she was really the, the, the best actor in her life that she loved him and I and and I say to myself oh you okay and the day after I called her and it was and I asked her if she wanted to be in the movie 
So she's a real owner of the farm who's mm -hmm. playing the grandmother, you know. And so you can imagine how she reacts when she she learns that uh, Victor Belmondo will, will, will play uh, his grandchild. And during the shooting, it was funny because suddenly she she was think she was really great, you know, she was really, really great. And she thought, and suddenly she she went and she said to Victor Belmondo, but if I'm playing your grandmother, that means I am your Jean-Paul Bel Belmondo's wife. You know what I mean? <laughs> she was always like that. So, so yes, I like to mix, you know, these real people from, yeah. from the place. And it's a very moving scene. You can see that there's a real kind of connection between the two of them as he's kind of, she's asking him how he's doing in, in California and, and so on. Yeah. Quite in touch. fact, yeah, in, in fact, uh, she was not, she was not an actress, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I I read some sentences, some lines, but she was really bad, you know what I mean? She she was totally blocked. So I changed my mind and I asked, uh, I went to see Victor and, and I I told Victor the life, uh, Marilou, it's her name. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, Victor, you're going to, you have to to take uh, to take in charge of scene. I don't know if it's English, mm -hmm. and you have to take care of that. And so he knew everything about the real life, the ma real Marie's Marie Lou real life. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So when they're talking, they're, they're talking really about her life. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And she forget. She totally for. She totally forgot that we were shooting at that scene. It's really like a documentary. Yeah. So oh, beautiful, yeah. yeah. Please, people, if you have um, uh, questions, you know, don't uh, feel free to to unmic and and just ask your questions. So, Bruce, if you've got any questions about, uh, you know, because you read the book with the uh, other people and Margie and and Adrian and so on, if you've got questions, please uh, feel free to to ask away. Yeah, go ahead, Bruce. I guess <laughs> it's it's more of a statement, and I'd like um, uh, our the director to comment on it. Uh, it seemed to me when I saw it the second, the film the second time, uh, that really there was an underlying theme of the constrictions, the limitations, at the same time of the richness of tradition in cognac. I mean, there was a strong statement throughout about you know the the pride with the product of this drink and the, what it did for the community, and it was an identity to the community, and I. I thought that the actress that played the um, oh you know the 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 woman who was the organizer of it all, mm -hmm. your, your comic relief who who was marvelous. I mean, I just think she was a great addition to the movie. Um, but then when she has that kind of heart to heart talk with uh, Stefan um, after you know when, when it's late at night, and she says, you know, I stayed, but staying is not caving in. And, you know, that tension between being different in a small town with all its richness, she felt best there. Um, that was a that was a beautiful theme. I just have to compliment you on it. I just think that that uh, that made the movie for me in a way, the the the, the frisson between uh, uh, tradition and conservatism, which is part of tradition, of course, and uh, and the need to accommodate uh, the modern, the modern. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, in fact, this is you're so right, you know, about the tradition. The tradition can be a good thing to make a good cognac. But when you are young, gay in the 80s, tradition can be a disaster. And that's why uh, the writer left, you know, uh, and and that he didn't want to come back to his town. But, you know, about the adaptation and... Uh, because you read the book, you know that uh, this character of uh, Gaël Flamand uh, doesn't exist in the book at all. There is no woman at all in the book. It's just about right. men. Right. And uh, in fact, about the work of adaptation, in fact, there is this really important theme in the book. It's about the relation between the capital and the countryside, about what people mm -hmm. uh, think and, you know, about this difficulty sometimes and it's all over the book a little a uh, little word about this uh, about this theme sorry so i needed 
it was really important for me to to deal with with that theme. Sorry, so that's why I invented this character of Gail Flamand because she was the incarnation of this subject. And once again, when I was for real making this very short documentary with NC, I made this woman. And in fact, during the shooting, she was with with uh, with us. And, and when she she was on the shooting, and when she saw uh, Guylaine Montez, which is a, a, a an actress quite famous in France, she she plays in lots of comedies, and and she was really uh, touched and. And to do that, uh, what I mean is, yeah. In fact, I I wrote the the part especially for Guylaine Landes for her, because in French she's really famous, but for this comedy part, you know, like at the start of the movie. And I wanted to write a part for her, more deep. And at start, she's really funny, and I play with that. And I wanted give her another dimension. And I wanted the audience, Bill and me, be like in front of the actress, like the writer is in front of the, the, the character of Gail Flamand. You know what I mean? I wanted the same surprise for us, French audience, and for, and I hope for you also, and for, and, and the writer in front of her. Adrienne. I, th I think that the strength of the scene comes from the contrast. She's so immersed in this public, as Bruce said, comic persona in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you get even irritated, but you also think, gee whiz, these deviations from schedule due to the little trips <laughs> and are causing her a great headache. I kept wondering, when is he going to get back and do his speech and so forth? <laughs> so then suddenly to have that late night intimacy where she's freed of it, freed of her schedule and she says I wanted to love whom I love mm. you know which with that implications too it was very that was a very touching as as people have said a very touching um ah, scene great. And contrast yeah you know because I also love when we say supporting role I think we say that in English but they are not just here to to serve the main part, you know what I mean? I, I love when the supporting role, they have different levels. And that's yeah. what I wanted to do with this character. Mm -hmm. well, I think you did, it, it really is a, a, a wonderful job of, of, of these, with, with all the secondary roles that we we can, we care about. You know, we'd, we'd mm. like to know a little bit more about the grandmother, a little bit more about what happens to, um, to Gael, you know, once the story's over. Yeah. Um, I, I wondered about um, uh, the two scenes that that for me were this great contrast was at the end when you had um, when you had Stefan walking around and, and making that sort of declaration and sort of going back over the story. And I thought it was going to end with that. And then it goes back to the two boys and, and that mm. sort of, you know, some of fondu le coeur kind of thing, because I, <laughs> that's when the tears just like started rolling down at first. When, <laughs> I was moved by uh, by Stefan and what he said, but then when I saw the two boys again, and, and he was going to take that picture, and then he didn't, and then he finally did. It just <laughs> all that passed. Yeah, it was, just, it was beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, but me too. <laughs> I <laughs> cried a lot on the shooting because, in fact, we started with the we started to shoot the the scenes the the the, the scenes of the end, even with the even in, with the present part, you know, we started with the speech, we started with the uh, scenes in the farm. So all these very deep scenes, and I was so moved by the actor. You know, it's always emotional when uh, you're shooting a scene and that your actors are more, are better than you thought, you know what I mean? And suddenly you, you can see that, okay, perhaps, perhaps you're going to, uh, your film perhaps going to be great. So I was crying when when the scenes. Uh, I was not the only one, mm -hmm. and when I didn't cried, the actors thought they were bad, you know. And they came <laughs> and they told me, Olivier, you didn't cry. We are really bad. Okay, we have to do it again. It was quite funny. Uh, Bruce, go ahead. Thank you. I I don't mean to dominate questions, so please. No, you know, we're just a small group, so please just. Chime okay. In. 
Okay. Um, well, two things briefly. When we were watching the movie and the initial sex scenes occur, um, I turned and said, "C'est pas un, ce n'est pas un film américain," because I don't think a film like that would be made in America, a, 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 even an art house film, you know. Uh, so, congratulations on that. I'm wondering the reaction in France. I know more, mm. much more sophisticated about things, and then, and then finally. After he, uh, Stefan, finds out that uh, Tomas has killed himself uh, and he starts running and he goes to the abandoned pool, that's so brilliant, I think, to have him sit there and his younger self is right nearby. I, and it was so quietly done, but beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's the moment in the movie where the two, the two parts are connected, you know, with the, with the, the, the the old or the grown up uh, writer and the young so it's it was really important but in fact this scene when you have in the swimming pool when you have the two characters uh was not right like this because when you don't have so much money to do the movie everything is a is an issue you know so i had to i couldn't have the actors the same day i couldn't have this kind of idea but thanks to the train French company SNCF, there was a strike, so the train didn't work. So you, the young Jeremy couldn't go to Paris, you know, because they they were always they 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 never meet, they never they never met each other, you know. They were the present part and they were the the past part, and there were one scene. From the past that we shot during the winter and it was his day and jeremy couldn't go back to paris and he was there and i asked him listen jeremy do you want to play just for this so i invented this shot during the process you know so i must thank the strike for that <laughs> the grave and um and uh, sorry i don't remember i guess about the sex scenes but you know in fact, uh, I was inspired by an American independent movie. I don't remember the name, but it's a Ira Sachs movie, which was quite famous. It's an independent New York uh, director from New York. And he made a movie 15 years ago. And sorry, I don't remember the title. And there is a very beautiful sex scenes. So... So yeah, I, I think you can do this kind of of scenes in 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 US, but uh, even for French audience, you know, the problem the problem was not the, the the sex. It was the problem was it was a gay sex scene, and in France the movie was not for um, for it was of course for a gay audience, but it was not for a larger a straight audience, you know, because Victor Belmondo, because Guillaume de Tonquedec, I told you, is really famous in France in comedy. So lots of people went to, to see the movie, but they didn't know at all what it was about, you know. And I can say that because I I went to introduce or I went to lots of screening for the for the movie to all over the, the, the all over the France and and lots of people were a little bit shocked, I must tell you. But because they loved the, the love story, lots of straight people went at the end and they told me, uh, oh, I will, most, most of the time it was old ladies, very chic, very, you know, very religious, this kind of, of woman. And they told me, you know, I don't like so much. Usually I don't like stories between two Man, you know, it's not my cup of tea, but thanks to your movie now, I will understand them in a better way. You know what I mean? Great. And they told me. And so finally, at the end, I said, oh, I made a gay story for straight people. <laughs> <laughs> like a page. Of, but so, so no, it was not so easy in France. In France, it was okay, of course, but, uh, but yeah, it was quite a... Uh, it was okay. It was okay, but lots of people was a little bit surprised by this scene, you know. And also because I can understand, in fact, because 
I start with a kind of comedy, you know, with Gaël Flamand, the, the character of the woman, you know, and it's quite funny. She's already talking about that. And suddenly, after 10 minutes, wow, there is this scene. So, yes, I, I understand that people can be a little bit, not shocked, but surprised. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I think it's 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 part of also the strength of the of the movie also I'm sure of that. Yeah. But but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I wanted to say about the sex scenes that I agree that they are to me they are really important because you have that first one that's a little bit violent and yeah. you know they don't know what to do with themselves and then slowly you know you see them getting to know each other and. I don't remember exactly, but I bet the last sex scene we see is extremely tender <laughs> from what I yeah. remember. And 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 so it's important you see that. So mm-hmm. it's it's not like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna show to to guys having sex to get more yeah. audience. You just like you just feel like it it's necessary in the story. Yeah. And also the other thing I wanted to say is that I the film, you know, it starts, yeah, it's don't get egg. So you're thinking, okay, it's going to be a comedy. And then you have the, the it, and it all, and slowly and slowly it, it goes and goes. And it's like the tears they get, they get. And like <laughs> Kevin said at the end, you're just like, oh, I can't get it. <laughs> and not only that, but also I cried also at the speech because I thought that, you know, it's all about love, but also that speech, it's about the love of a father for his son and yeah. how and how the son is just like, my dad never told me anything. He he hid himself, he hid everything. But then what the what Stefan is telling him is, look, all you know, all these little things that he left, all these little clues, it's because he wanted you to know. If you wanted to know he left it there for you to find and um and i and that made me cry too because i just went ah there's just too much love in this film (laughs) it's overflowing (laughs) thank you no but you know you're you're right and and in fact i was in the novel i was really touched by this kind of father and son relationship you know there is the relation between the real father uh, who never talked about his secrets and 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 this boy who suffered so much from not the secrets but from from the silence of his father you know and in the end there is also a relation you can imagine that the writer and the son will have this kind of father and son relation we say in french relation filiale and i was really moved by that and in fact it was it was really the reason why I wanted to tell this story. In fact, I was really moved by that. It's in the novel, and then in the movie, I I walk around that, you know. And there is something I think the the novel was a huge success in France, but also it's translated in lots of other countries, because because it's not just about a gay love story, you know. It's more universal. It's about family secrets it's about the choice you have to do in your life in this story this is Toma who decided um, who, who was so ashamed to 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 live his life but it can be you know for something else sometimes you have to make you have to make some big choices like for your job or to to live in another country you know it's this kind of, it's about this kind of choices you have to do in your life to to be happy or not and I thought it was, that's why it was a, a huge race. But that the thing who touched me so much, even now. Yeah, because um, right from the beginning, uh, it's Thomas. Uh, Thomas says to um, Stefan, "I will stay, and and you will leave." And, mm. Yes, it's and it's like that scene really constantly beautiful. throughout. And yeah, yeah, and 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 everybody's had that in the like, even if they've stayed somewhere. There's someone who's left who they who who, the, who they didn't see their life. They didn't, you know. And, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. And it's also life in the in the country when you have a farm and you're the mm-hmm. only son. Well, you're expected. To, ah, yes, of course. Yeah. To take it over, so you know, it's it's there's so much responsibility on his shoulder that you yeah, know, just like you're right. Forget you're right. himself you're right. because. If his parents were not farmers, things may have been different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we when we discussed uh, 
the film, the, the, the presence of Thomas as throughout his life, we got the feeling that he really didn't love uh, Victor, that is the, the character played by Victor, uh, Lucas. Um, he, he didn't really love him. He, he, oh, yeah. he never expressed uh, much to him, uh, even though he could have, and that was part of, I guess, his cowardice, as Lucas describes in the movie. But I, I never got the feeling that the father had a warm relationship with Lucas. I think because he was a Saturnine I, character anyway, and he was constantly preoccupied with his with his double identity, probably muted whatever he would have been like. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he was taciturn to that it was clear that he yeah. didn't speak. I was just going to say that it's a trivial point, but the translator into English was an actress. Um, yeah, she has become francophone and uh, was a teenage actress here. So she probably lent her emotion to it. I don't know whether that parlayed into any kind of popularity here, but um, I, I read Molly, it. So. Molly Ringray. Yes, yeah. Molly Ringray. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she's Breakfast Club. Yeah, yeah, I was really surprised. Uh, she, she's famous for people like me, you know, 50, uh, 50 and more. And so, yeah, I was I was really surprised to I, I don't know how, why she translated, but Philippe Besson was uh, happy with the translation. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that she's famous. I, I was really surprised. Yeah. And uh, about the relation with the, the and you're so right about the of course, Thomas is really cold with his son because he's so in his mind about, you know, his double life. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean it. And in fact, at the end. Perhaps he loves him telling the secret the way he did. But yes, yes. Now he was too too confused about his life. He, he, he didn't love himself, you know what I mean? So it was difficult for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there, uh, do you have a, a, a feeling for the uh, English translation of the title, Lie With Me, compared to Arrête avec tes mentions? Oh, I really love the English um the English title to tell you the truth because there is a double meaning, you know, yeah. lie with me. And it's really for, I don't know, but for me as a French man, understanding the English title for him is really poetic, you know, lie with me. And in fact, uh, when I was, because I knew the title, it's, it's the title translated, it's the title of the novel, you know, uh, lie with me. It's not a title we decided to translate for the movie. Uh, it was it was existing before, and at what time I, I thought it was so beautiful so that my movie that, that at one moment the title of my movie was "More avec moi." You know, I translated the English title for the French movie "More avec moi," but in French there is not this double meaning with lie and right. lie. And so, and because it was a, a, a success, I decided to keep the, the the French title. But that start in in French, more uh, arrête avec tes mensonges. And I did not thought it was a really great uh, title. You know, it's it's a little bit trivia, tri trivial. We say trivial. It's, not yeah. Yeah. trivial. it's less yeah. poetic than the English one. But because I decided to keep the French title, I work a lot about this notion of lie, more than in the, in the book, I think. I really, everybody lied to mm -hmm. each other in the movie. I really decided, for example, Lucas lied to the writer because there is no lie like this in the novel. But I, I really, I really decided to, to write, to, to work hard about the notion of lie, mm -hmm. lying to herself, lying to the others. Yeah, in the French title, there's kind of an implication of a of a double meaning with the idea of arrête avec tes mensonges or arrête avec tes histoires, which could yeah. be something yes. that, that that a that a parent says to the child, and then the mensonges exactly. are, are imagined, you know, and sto how stories are are kind of it, fiction, so it's something made up, and yeah, but exactly. it's not as it's not as forward as as the English title, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. And you like the English title? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I like that a lot. Yes, yeah, and yeah. the group I was with uh, preferred the English title. Yeah, me too, me too. <laughs> but you know, it's uh, it's like my, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but sometimes you 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 find the the right titles after you know is that i remember you... my, my my first feature film it was with bernadette lafon which is a She's dead now, but she was a really famous actress from the New Wave. And the French title was Les Petites Vacances, Small mm -hmm. Vacation, which is which was quite ironical, uh, if you know the story. But the English title, uh, because it was the story of a grandmother who kidnapped uh, her grandchildren. And... The English title was Stolen Holidays, you know, it was mm. Stolen Holidays, and it was wow, so wonderful, but it was too late to change <laughs> the French title. So it's always the case. It was too late to change. For Philippe Besson. Voilà. Olivier, okay. do you have plans for um, the future? Are you Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm well? writing right now. So <laughs> I see that it's nine now and I have to work. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm. It was really a long journey. This, this movie because uh, I was lucky because we we sold it in mm -hmm. lots of countries. So for a year, I just I, I just I was traveling a lot and and it was really nice. But I didn't work at all. <laughs> so now I decided to stop two months ago to to stop everything and to to stay on my desk and to write. So I'm. I'm writing on a more, uh, how do you say that? It's a true story. It's about uh, these days. It's it's a story which is not finished. And it's uh, uh, about uh, a man fighting against uh, a very a multinational who is going to po qui va polluer. I don't know how you say that. Polluted, it's pollution, yeah. 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 It's, a, it's a sort of Erin Brokovich French movie. <laughs> Cool. And well, this is a project I'm, I'm working on these days, so we will see. Uh, you're talking about Erin Brockovich, and then there was one question. So some people said it was the French Brockback Mountain. Like, ah, really yeah. What do you think of that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I like that. I like the comparison. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you start your days, your your day now. Yeah. Oh, we're at, we're at lunchtime now. So. Yeah, ah, good. great. <laughs> I'm gonna eat now also. Okay. <laughs> see, would you like to say a few words before we before we leave? Who? At the end. Oh, at oh. the end. Oh, 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 just it's um a scene that was harrowing, but also sort of thrilling was when, when the lie that you said you added. Um, about um, Lucas, say Luca saying um, that he hadn't read the books and everything. When that's discovered by the writer, and it becomes sort of a violent side piece, and all of these retirees are in the background, and suddenly their very ebullient um, guide is uh, is is sort of garroting, uh, you know, yeah. choking the other one, and um, it was a very dramatic scene, and and yeah. and. The background are all these retirees they've been talking talking and then they become aware that this weird thing is happening sort yes. of like, really. <laughs> well done thank you <laughs> yes olivier would like to say you know thank you so much for for taking time out of your day thank to you. fight with us uh, it's Cecilia, always a like pleasure you? yeah sorry i and hope for the for my next movie yeah and maybe in yeah. sacramento this time instead of on zoom ah okay with pleasure <laughs> Yeah. Pleasure. Because so we just uh, uh just prepared this. It was the Tower Theater uh oh, wow. 85th anniversary yesterday, uh, and so I... we prepared some flyers. So we have our date. So the Winter Shorts Fest is going to be in February 22nd, and the festival is going to be June 7 to 9, and it's all going to be at the Tower. Uh, um, great. Of course, we're going to announce that. <laughs> and... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, thank you so, so much. Merci à tout le monde. Thank, thank you. Till next time. Thank you. Happy Sunday. Merci.